Hey team, I'm Maddie. Welcome to Science Side Up. And today we are talking about virtual temperature. A theme you may be noticing about the last few videos is how much having water vapor in our atmosphere complicates things and makes things more difficult. A theme we're gonna have moving forward is what would the atmosphere be like and behave like and do if there was no water vapor? And then how does that change when we add water vapor back in? Virtual temperature is the temperature an air parcel would have if it didn't have any water vapor in it. So first let me write that out mathematically and then we'll talk about it conceptually. So virtual temperature is actual temperature of the air parcel times, this is one plus mixing ratio divided by epsilon, where epsilon is a constant, it's 0.622, and it is the ratio of the gas constant, so that R from the ideal gas law, um, the gas constants for dry air and water vapor. That's why I wrote this down. Um, and then all of this is over one plus mixing ratio. So that's math, um, but this doesn't necessarily give us a conceptual understanding of like what we're doing to this air parcel. So for that, let me draw you a picture. The idea with virtual temperature is if we start with this air parcel that has regular air, nitrogen and oxygen, and that little bit of like argon. And then it also has water vapor. Conceptually, what virtual temperature does is we're gonna take out each of these molecules of water and replace it with a molecule of dry air. How did replacing the water vapor with dry air affect affect this parcel. That comes down to the fact that nitrogen and oxygen, and specifically these diatomic molecules, N2 and O2, are both going to weigh more, they have a greater atomic mass than the water vapor that they replaced, right? Water vapor is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Hydrogen only has one proton each, so this is like two protons, oxygen has eight protons. So O2 has 16 protons. Nitrogen has 14 because the uh, atomic number of nitrogen is seven. It has seven protons in its nucleus. The point being that both 14 and 16 are bigger than 10. So the molecules that we replaced the water with way more than the water did. What this difference in density tells us is that the virtual temperature of an air parcel is generally warmer than its actual temperature. And now for everybody's favorite question, how in the world do I use this? Why is this important? And it comes down to making our lives simpler anytime we're doing an, a calculation with the ideal gas law. If when we're using the ideal gas law, this is also called our equation of state, um, this constant, it's a constant for the type of gas that you're considering. Every time we change the amount of water vapor in the air, we're gonna change the gas constant. So to make our lives easier, if we want to always use the gas constant for dry air, then as long as we always use virtual temperature, we're good to go. So believe it or not, this does make your life simpler, especially when you're doing like thermodynamic calculations with the atmosphere. Okay team, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you liked this video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye team. What's a bad joke about virtual temperature? Um, it's the, is how hot the tea being spilled on Twitter is.